good morning viewers and my dear learners from wherever you are welcome again to elimu live on ku tv i'm teacher donald ndombi uh, today i want to take you through mathematics form 4 and we want to discuss about statistics now just to quickly review things that you've learned before in form 2 you did statistics 1 you talked about uh, mean mode and median you also looked at data presentation therefore statistics is a part and parcel of of life you've had every day on uh, various tv channels when our cs for health giving us data for for the covid 19 cases in kenya and comparatively with the other countries you've heard of numbers he has even given a breakdown of uh, infections per county. You've heard even, like in Nairobi, how many cases in Kawangware, how many in Kibra, how many in Madare, how many in uh, Embakasi, how many in Westlands. All those are what we are calling statistics. So in Form 2, you looked at how you could represent this uh, data in various forms. For example, using a histogram, you could draw a pie chart, or you could... Uh, you could draw a bar graph and many others. Now in uh, now in in form four, we will look at uh, we will look at uh, mean, but using a different method, which we are calling mean using assumed mean for grouped and ungrouped data. Then we shall look at uh, quartiles. We shall look at uh, quartiles, which is uh, about still mean. Uh, median lower quartile and upper quartile then in the interquartile range then we shall look at what we are calling accumulative frequency uh, curve also called also called the ogive or ogive then we shall look at uh, variance and standard deviation so we shall look at uh, variance and standard deviation so these two we call them measures of dispersion so in form two, what you are, what we were calculating mean, then I, I've talked about uh, mode, then I've talked about median. So these two, these three were called measures of central tendency. Now we want to look at measures of uh, dispersion or measures of spread to see how data is spread. Therefore, quickly get your get your writing material ready as we as we move on. So I want to quickly start with the mean using assumed mean. So we we go to mean using assumed mean. Therefore, what we are calling assumed mean, as uh, as the name suggests, assumed mean. If you are given a list of data, we can say let's assume the mean is 50. Therefore, that is not the real mean, but it's said either to be called working mean or assumed mean. So if you are given in a in a given data assumed mean, you are supposed to use a specific formula. In form two, we are just calculating mean using sum of all the values divided by their number. Now what happens if you are given uh, an assumed mean or a working mean? Then we have to use we have to use a formula here. So in uh, just a reminder, x bar this is this is mean that that is mean equals to this a here stands for assumed mean assumed assumed mean or working mean then this t sometimes we use d for deviation so is the deviation of each value from the assumed mean each value from the assumed mean so uh, you will see in some books they use d and in others they use t so depending on uh, in an exam situation we will always tell you what to use a table will have either a t or a d so do not worry, the formula is the same. Because if we are using D, it, it will be X bar, which is mean, equals to assumed mean plus the sum of summation D over, over N, where N is the number of data items. So for grouped data, when, when data is grouped, then we are talking about, whenever we are saying grouped data, it means we have frequencies. So we have F. F that F there means what? Frequency. So you, uh, you need to be very careful. Are you using grouped data or ungrouped data? 
any data where there are frequencies, like in a class, we can, uh, for example, we say in a test out of 50, we had 10 students scoring 13. So that will be the frequency. We have some students scoring 20 out of 40, others scored 39, something like that. But if we just, just like in your house right now, how many people are you there? Just count. What is the age distribution of those people? Start with your father, your mother, your elder sibling. Yes, we can list those ages. Like your father is 70, your mother is 50, the elder one is 30, like that. That is, we don't have a frequency. But if we compare several families, like in if you are in an apartment, then we are talking about the people living on the first ground or first floor. And then there's the second floor like that. We can look at the distribution. Then we say, at the end of the day, if we did some analysis, we have 20 people who, who range between 15 to 30, something like that. Then that comes in with what? Frequency. So you need to be to be keen whenever we are talking about frequency uh, or grouped data, something like that. So you need to be very careful. Now we look at uh, an example direct. Look at that example. So this, this, is, a, this is some values representing ages of people 56 58 uh, we have 56 58 63 64 68 like that up to 72 then you have been told using a suitable assumed mean find the mean mark using a suitable assumed mean find the mean mark so we want to find the mean mark that is the question and we've been told to to use what a suitable assumed mean so the first thing we know, we, we remember the formula here. We have said our mean, which is x bar, is equal to the assumed mean plus what? The sum of the deviations over, over n. So you can use d or t, or whatever you prefer, use it. So therefore, in this case, one, we, we rearrange this data in a table form. So you can see here, if we arrange it in a table form, we have a... We arrange them in ascending order. So we have 56 here. We have 58 like that up to 72. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, so I know some of you will ask me, how do you, why, why did I choose 64? 64 is just for convenience. I chose a number which is, look at the numbers. It's almost at the, at the center of, this, of the distribution from 56 to 72. But in, sometimes the, the question will specify, use this as the assumed mean. In most cases, it is that way. Therefore, in this case, if I take our deviation, D is X over minus A, where X is this value here. This, this value here, this is our X1, this is our X2, X3, like that, up to 72. So we need to look for deviation. How far is 56 from 64? So remember, it is X minus A, not the other way. That's why we have a negative. So you take your calculator quickly. 56 minus 64, you get negative 8. 58 minus 64, you get, you get negative 6. Uh, 63 minus 64, you get negative 1. 64 minus itself, you get 0. Like that, like that, all the way like this. Then at the end of this, we need the, we need the sum of all those values. So you add the values down. So the... First of all, what is your n? So you, you don't add these values here. You just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So n is 8. So you write here n equals to 8. So your n is 8. There are 8 values. Then we find the sum of these. You add negative 8 plus negative 6 plus negative 1 plus 0 all the way. You'll get 8. Therefore, using the formula mean equals to this, you'll realize our assumed mean was 64. So you take your 64. Then the sum of the deviations is 8. So you take your 8 there. Then our n here is also 8. So 8 over 8, that will give me 1. Then 64 plus 1 will give us what? 65. So the mean, the mean age, if this was to be age, is 65 years, like that. It's very simple. You can, you can quickly follow through. You can follow through easily. Then we look at another example now, example two. We look at example two. So uh, example two says, the mass of 100 objects measured to the nearest kilogram are given in the following table. So I can give you uh, 30 seconds to copy that, but you don't, you don't need to, you only need to note, you only need to note uh, 
this one here mass of what 100 object so that tells us directly that n is what 100 so the mass of 100 objects measured to the nearest kilogram are given in the following table so look at the table so we have the mass that now they are given as grouped data so that is uh, we have uh, we have 1 to 5 then we have 6 to 10 so this is this is what we are calling groups so this is the first group this is another group this 11 to 20 another one this one another group 26 to 40 another group then number of students or num number of objects in this case so this is what we are calling the frequency so we are saying that seven objects weigh between one to five kilograms 16 objects weigh between six to ten then 38 like that now we cannot work on this table when it is this way we have to customize it depending on the question what we want so we make it look like this in a vertical way so the first one we have mass we have mass then we have f here re represent the number of objects or frequency now you realize in our formula we require we require ft we require t then we require ft but this is one to five so we cannot use one to five because this is this is a group one to five the whole of this is a group we only need one value so what we do we find the midpoint the midpoint of each each group so if i get the the midpoint of each group here you how do you get the midpoint if in the first case you take one plus five so quickly if you take one uh, if you take one plus five one plus five then you divide this by two so that will be six divided by two you get your three there six plus ten is sixteen divided by two you get eight 11 plus 20, that should be 31, divided by 2, you get your 15.5. 21 and 25, the sum is 46, divided by 2, you get that. This is 66, divided by 2, you get that. So we don't need these values, we don't need the sum. So we, no, we only need to use the formula here. Now, where did 15.5 come from? The, the question said, uh, if, you, if you look at the question uh, quickly here, the question says, uh, you following calculate the mean mass now we, we want to use a suitable assumed mean a suitable assumed mean so after getting my my table in this in this order i look at the values 3 8 15.5 23 then 33 appropriately 15.5 seems to be at the center of all these values so i take this as my assumed mean so this is my a then remember <coughs> our t is x minus a so x is this value here is like this case our x is 3 so you take 3 minus that you get negative 12.5 the other one 8 minus 15.5 you get this 15.5 minus 15.5 you get 0 then 23 minus 15.5 you get 7.5 then 33 minus 15.5 you get 17.5 now we need what ft so ft means you take f remember our f column is this one we need this now in an exam situation we advise you to I, you can see what i'm doing you put a star here on f you require that one and this other one you require it to multiply these two so you'll need to multiply f times t so you take the value of f here seven multiply it by this and your answer should be that take the next value of f that should be 16 multiply it by by this 7.5 negative you get negative 120 take 38 multiply it by 0 then you get 0 then like that like that then up to 105 now in our formula we need the sum of f that is why you can see 100 here remember we we were told 100 mass of 100 objects so our total f here which we are this is the same as n this n is the total frequency all the objects then we have the ft you add all these values here you get what 145 once you are done with this then the next thing is so easy just write the formula down the formula for mean is mean equals to the assumed mean plus sum of ft over sum of f so that will be our assumed mean was 15.5 plus then the sum here is 145 then our n or summation f is 100 so that gives me 15.5 if i divide this you get 
1.45 and if you add your sum is 16.95 therefore the mean mass of those hundred the mean mass of those hundred objects is 16.95 now an advice sometimes maybe you are you are so quick and you didn't see this decimal then you you took 145 direct and added to 15.5 so your answer will be too big now it is common sense to look at the table you look at this table look at the the masses the if we talk about one to five it means the smallest we can have is what one then the look at the last class the highest we can have is what 40. so you cannot have a mean which is less than one and is bigger than 40. so the, our value of the mean anything we calculate here for the mass it must be between 1 and 40. so by inspection you need to check is my answer in this range because sometimes I, I had people joking on the road you are in an exam then people are arguing whether the answer was 16.9 or 20 then you, you got 1700 so you see these masses we have one up to 40. so your answer cannot be bigger than 40 or less than one it cannot be a negative so that is how we get what a mean using assumed mean any question just you will you will ask at the end using the using the number you can see on on your screen you can whatsapp there we shall look at them now we want to move to quartiles we want to move to quartiles now what are quartiles quartiles comes from the word quarter and quarter means you divide whatever you have into how many pieces into four pieces so one is called first quarter and then we have second quarter and then the third quarter and then the full one so the first quarter we call it the lower quartile the second quarter which is as as equal to a half we call it median then the third quarter we call it the upper quartile then we don't have the fourth quarter because that will be that will be what that will be a whole thing therefore we want to see how do we calculate quartiles using uh, two methods one we shall use a formula uh, you are introduced to this formula in form 2 but we want to repeat just a recap on it then we shall draw a graph in a, because we are different there are some people who can understand well with a graph but in an exam situation you are told what to do if they say calculate quartiles then you are supposed to calculate using a specific formula if they say draw a cumulative frequency graph and use it to find quartiles you have to draw the graph first then from the graph extract values you know uh, mathematics requires you to to have analysis skills so you are supposed to break down data then analyze so that is using a graph to come up with what values otherwise if the equation is calculate direct then you are supposed to <coughs> to calculate now how do you calculate so if you are given if you are given a uh, uh, you want to calculate median we are saying median equals to l plus n over 2 minus c over f times that this formula here so you need to familiarize yourself with that formula now this is for what for median that is why you can see here we are talking about n over 2 where is n over 2 coming from we have already said median is half of half of the distribution half of the data values like if you arrange them one two three four five like this where so you if where is the where is the middle of this you can see one two then we have five four so three becomes our median it is in the middle if you cut here you have two values this side two values this side that is our median but if they were four like one two three four where is the median so you cannot say two is the median or three is the median because these are four values you have to cut here first of all then these two people who are on the boundary you tell them bring your nusumukate here and you your nusumukate we share so you add the two two plus three you get five then you divide by two that you did in form two that's not we want what we don't want to do but uh, this is a, a quick recap just to help us understand the reason why we are talking about uh, n over two so n over two here means you, to you take the total frequency divided by two like that then remember we are now looking at grouped data so we need to to look at some median class and what have you so if it is uh, we use the same formula for for others like uh, for we use the same formula for quartiles so median is this now if it is if it is the lower quartile q1 we write it as uh, q1 if it is q1 we shall say q1 equals to l plus then 
instead of n over 2 now we shall have what n over n over 4 because that is a quarter minus c then this over what over f all of them like this multiplied by i so what has changed is only n over 4 and n over 2 so if you know this formula you can calculate the other quartiles the lower and the upper quartile now we want to define what what do these letters represent so we have said l is the what the lower limit of the median class lower limit of the median class what does uh, n represent what does n represent so we we, we just quickly define uh, those letters you can write somewhere quickly you can you can see we have already said l is i want to to maintain this formula so that we can be referring to it so we are saying l is the lower limit of the median class then n n is we can you can write somewhere n is the total frequency total frequency then we have what we are calling c this c is cumulative frequency above cumulative frequency above the median class above then there is that f here this f here is the frequency of the median class frequency of median class then lastly i i comes from interval so that is the class interval class interval like that so if your work here is just to identify the median class you have only two tasks one identify the median class two remember this formula once you remember those two you are done very easy so we can uh, look at an example quickly example one you can look at example one the example here is <clears throat> the data below shows the uh, ages of 100 members of a cooperative group calculate the quartile and interquartile range then calculate the 60th percentile so we want to you you can see this column here this column with the cf this one this one was added in a, in a paper you will not have this this you are supposed to add yourself depending that's why it has a different color so what you are given is this only class and the frequency like that then you are supposed to you are supposed to add your cumulative frequency now i, I how, what does cumulative mean cumulative means from uh, comes from the word um, add you are summing up you are summing you are summing up or you are adding all the frequencies downwards so the first cumulative frequency is this two so you take the two the way it is now the next one where did i get nine now you add this two plus nine or you say two i mean two plus seven that will give us what nine the next one you say two plus seven plus fifteen that will give you twenty four but why should you be doing this on your calculator just start two you press two then next you say plus what is the next frequency seven so you say plus seven you get your answer nine now your calculator has stored this as an answer so you keep adding next plus 15 what's the answer 24 you write like that then you keep adding like that downwards you keep adding we are at 24 you add uh -huh, next 24 plus 20 you get 44 44 plus 30 you get so we are adding like this this and that then you get the answer here so that's an angle 37 plus 16 74 plus 16 then 90 plus 10 you get your 100 like that so we take the values we are said uh, the frequencies you add so if the first value here is 2 the next one is 7 so the the cf here will be 2 then we are we will do like an angle 2 and 7 they uh, they come up together to give us 9 then the next one was let's say um that was 15 so you say now the next one will be 9 and 15 they make an angle and the angle is the angle is what say 24 then the next one you have your 20 here so you say 24 and 20 that angle becomes 44 next 44 the next one here is 30 so you, like that like that you can see you can make use of this angle thing so you you just talk to yourself Tuna seven, monataka aje, tunataka nine, like that. Nine and fifteen, tunataka twenty-four. Twenty-four and twenty, forty-four. Forty-four and thirty, like that. That's how we get these values here. And uh, another quick check. We were told it was what? It was the age distribution of a hundred members. So your last value here must be hundred. If you get one ten here, then you need to check your working. That is how we got those values. Now from there, uh, 
we want to calculate what was the question first of all we want to calculate uh, the question is the question is calculate what the quartile and IQR interquartile range you calculate the quartiles and the interquartile range so we need to look at uh, those values here we we want to calculate the lower quartile we want to calculate the calculate the median then we calculate the upper quartile like that so you have your table here uh, now remember our formula so i'll just uh, i'll just show the first one then the other one you can try at your own time i want to try the, i just show you median then you do the rest so what what you are supposed to do here number one is to identify the median class so we want median so we want to calculate to find the median class so median class what we do first of all it will it will be the class that lies this is very important you can note it down lies in the cumulative frequency which is closest closest but what does that symbol mean but greater than but greater than n over 2 so you are supposed to take the class which is in the cumulative frequency or which corresponds to the cumulative frequency closest to but greater than n over 2 now how do we do that what is our total n here what is our n 100 so we take 100 divided by 2 and our answer is 50 now this 50 is not the median we are saying we want to locate where 50 is in the cumulative frequency column that is cumulative frequency this is f then these were the were the mass i guess then so we are saying you check after getting n over 2 which is our 50 look at these values here in the cf which value here is closest to 50 i know quickly you will tell me what 44 another one 74 now there is the second condition the first condition is closest but there is another condition it must be greater so we want to take the cf which is closest to 50 but greater than it so if you pick 44 44 is not greater than 50 so we cannot pick 44 so what is the cf that, that we are talking about that should be 74 74 is greater than 50 therefore we take 74 so we if you have a pencil then you are supposed to put a star here then put another star here so that means our 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 median class is 41 to 41 to 45 our median class is 41 to 45 so from here what was our formula if you can remember what was our formula so i'm insisting you must first lo locate where the median class is after locating the median class then you are supposed to you are supposed to find the lower class limit of that class you are supposed to take the frequency of that class you are supposed to take the cumulative frequency above that class then you are supposed to find its class interval the interval class interval means uh, the difference between the upper class limit minus the lower class limit then that will give you your i so quickly if we if we look at what we have identified then i can easily say my l I can easily say my L equals to what is the lower limit of this class? That will be 41 minus 0 0.5. That gives me 40.5. So you take 40.5. Then what else? Uh, we need uh, <clears throat> we need n over 2. Our n over 2 was what? 100 over 2. That is 50. What else do we need? Then we need uh, C. C is the cumulative frequency above. That, now the goodness of arranging this data this way. Your eyes cannot be light. If I, uh, you can, they can lie to you. If you are at 74 here, what is the cumulative frequency above? It's just above here. That is 44. So C is 44, like that. If you pick 90, you'll get a negative somewhere, which is not, which is not right. Then we need F, the frequency of this class for 41 to 45. How many people are there? 30. So our F is 30. Then there's this small boy called I. Our I here is the highest value minus the lowest value remember the highest value is not 45 but that will be 45.5 minus the lower class boundary of that is 40.5 that will give you 5 
like that now with with all these values now we can we can get our our median our median m will be equal to l which is 40.5 plus n over 2 that will be 50 so if uh, if you allow me to write this somewhere up here that will be l is 40.5 then we have uh, n over 2 is 50 then we have uh, n over 2 is 50 and then what else do we have we have our c as 44 then we have our f as 30 and our i as 5 now with all this in mind now we can come down here and calculate our our median can calculate our median here easily uh, just uh, substituting these values into the formula directly like that then you'll have your your median so in this case our median equals to l which is 40.5 plus 50 uh, minus 44 all this is divided by f which is 30 then put brackets here then multiply by 5 like that i can leave it there what will you do i can't work out this for you you just take this to your calculator maybe one step only that will be 40.5 plus 50 minus 44 is 6 so that will be 6 over 30 is multiplied by 5 so get your answer there so the answer will be will be still in the same in the same what in the same group remember you cannot get a mean of over over 55 because that is the highest the highest limit there so you can get your answers direct from there that was median now for let's go to the other one which is uh, the the lower quartile q1 so q1 the formula is q1 equals to still l plus now instead of n over 2 now we shall have n over 4 then minus c this is divided by f then put brackets like that multiply by i <coughs> now if we go back to our table how do you get our so in this case we, we can easily get our our quartile class where, where does it lie so we, we take 100 over 4 that will give us 25 so we shall look for the cf which is closest i remember this closest but closest but what but greater than 25 the cf which is closest but greater than 25 so if you go back to if you go back to our our data we are looking for a cf here we are looking for a cf which is closest but greater than 25 so you can see 44 74 uh, we can go back a bit here we go back you you will get you'll get another cf here of 24 so <clears throat> we have said we want the cf closest but greater than 25 so we have 24 and 44 by guesswork which one do we take which one is our which cf do we do we take we cannot take 24 because the second condition is it must be greater greater than 25 so in that case we are we are saying uh, we will take the cf which is 20 which is 44 now for this 44 we need to identify go back to the table for that 44 i know we are we are done with this so i can uh, can wrap this we can uh, wrap this now for we want to calculate q1 so we have already identified that our our cf corresponding to and greater than 25 is 44 so we want to pick we we look at uh, this 44 and uh, if we go back so this is our first quartile class our quartile lower quartile lies in 36 to 40 so from there quickly l is what 35.5 you take this 36 minus 0 0.5 that will give you that 5.5 then what else do we need we have already said n over 4 is 25 we have also seen now from here our c is the cumulative frequency above so whatever came before this which is what what came before that from our from our table you see it is what from our table that should be 24 so that is 24 therefore our c is 24 so we write here c 
equals to c equals to 24 what else do we need we need f our f what is the frequency of this class you remember this column here is f the frequency of that class is 20 so we take 20 then what else do we need i the class interval you take 40.5 this one minus 35.5 the easiest way you can say 40 minus 36 4 plus 1 that will give us 5 like that so from there you can easily see our q1 is equals to l which is 35.5 then add n over 4 that will be 25 minus 24 over our f which is 20 then multiply this by what this in bracket multiplied by 5 so again that is some work for you get the answer get the answer like that now if before we we, 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 we go to the next question how will we how will we how will we do q uh, q3 q3 which is the upper quartile it is the same thing so the first thing we take three quarters of a hundred so that is three over four times n so that will be three quarters of a hundred that should be 75 again we check here the cumulative frequency closest to but greater than 75 so we have 74 and we have 90 this one is is closest but less so we take 90 then we we go back here so we identify this as our upper quartile class so it lies in this class so you have your lower quartile you, uh, your lower class boundary you can get from there your frequency is here c is 74 then you can get the class interval 50 minus 46 then the answer you get plus one then calculate calculate all those like that that should be so easy for you that should be so easy for you now just a quick one you realize this the process we've been doing is so involving it's so involving and requires you to cram but you have no choice if you will understand by cramming the better so you have to cram that formula that l plus whatever you want to find if it is if it is the first quartile you have n over 4 minus c over f times i then the upper quartile then the median you so you have to know that formula then once you know that formula actually and you, your work is just to identify those values and substitute that is it now i saw some student ask me do they mark for you when you just write the formula and stop there no that one try in physics in math you might we mark from substitution so you, you must know how to calculate those values the l and whatever you have and substitute into your formula rightly and get your answers now we want to look at another method of finding the same quartiles but using a graph so you you draw a graph and this graph we are calling it a uh, we are calling it accumulative frequency curve accumulative frequency curve so accumulative frequency curve is also called an ogive and uh, it's also called an ogive if you went to a group of schools you will say ogive so cumulative frequency curve what is it is a graph of cumulative frequency against what upper class limits so we plot when we say a graph of against whatever comes before against goes to the y-axis what comes after against goes to the x-axis that should be simple for you why why do we need it we use it is used to determine what quartiles in a simpler way what else it's also used to determine the pass mark in a test or criteria for grading like after kcs is done that's why you the the grading system is not uh, is not uh, fixed you hear some people say uh, sometimes even a 65 could be an a sometimes it will be 90 for you to get an a so it, they use this thing we are calling cumulative frequency after all papers are marked and marks are entered we draw cumulative frequency then the a certain percentage of students should uh, should just get an A. So if we say a quarter of the students will get an A, or if we say 10% uh, of the students will get an A, then we can we can use that 10% and I and determine what the pass mark. We can determine the pass mark. Then like uh, you had even in the COVID cases, if we plot the cumulative frequency against uh, against the time against this this uh, upper class limits of the cases that have been reported, that curve 
you see every time they are talking about flattening it so right now if we, we if we plot that curve for us to say it is flattened it should look like this once it is like that then we say things are now normal but if you look at the cases the way they are reported uh, daily this graph does not look like this it rather looks like this it it is still going like that so we don't know where it will go up to so it is if we draw cumulative frequency curve against now that one is against time it will it looks like that every day every day therefore if we look at um, if we look at an example an example quickly example 1 example 1 says the table below shows the distribution of marks scored by 60 pupils in a mathematics test 60 pupils in a mathematics test so you can uh, copy the table you have uh, 30 seconds so you can see the marks marks here as a percentage then we have uh, so we have marks as a percentage then we have a number of students remember this is what frequency like that so we have 11 to 22 like that like that like that up to 89 to 90. now the first question is on the graph paper draw an ogive that represents the above information maybe someone was copying so you you, you can copy quickly but I, I i still advise you when you when you want to do this ensure you write you write it downwards so you'll have your marks then you'll have your f then you'll have your cf in this form so you'll have to make a table which looks like that though there is no harm if you can still work it the way it is so on the graph paper draw an give that represents the above information then use the graph to estimate the interquartile range of the performance then see in order to pass the test i just told you we use this to determine pass mark in order to to pass the test a pupil has to score more than 48 marks now the question is calculate the percentage of the pupils who passed the test how many guys passed the test so uh what we'll do from all these classes from this 11 to 20 21 we only need the upper limits we only need the upper limit so the upper limit for this one is what 20.5 so you will have 20.5 then this one is 30.5 40.5 like that blah 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 up to 90.5 then we assume there was another class here which came before 11 to 20 let's say that class was 1 to 10 so the upper limit of this class is 10.5 however no one scored between 1 and 10 so what is the frequency how many how many students scored 1 to 10 0 therefore you will see in my table here that's my table I have where I have put uh, this these values that are in bold this one that was not in the the data given because our data started with 11 to 20 this is 11 to 20 this is 20 to 30 this is 30 uh, not not that is 21 to 30 this is 31 to 40 this is 41 to 50 then 51 to 60 this other one is 61 to 70 then 71 to 80 then lastly 81 to 90 like that therefore we said there was another class here which was what 1 to 10 but no one scored no no student scored between 1 and 10 so it was not given so we assume the number of students there is zero then so the cf we are adding so the first one is zero the next one now our angle will be looking like this zero na two muna two two na five muna seven Seven and six minus thirteen. Thirteen and ten, twenty-three. Twenty-three and fourteen, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven and eleven, forty-eight. Like that, like that, like that. You can see what I'm doing, like that. So remember, the last value must be must tally the number of students that sat for the test. If you got seventy-two, then it means you have ghost students. So we were told pupils in that class were how many? Sixty. So our last value is sixty. So what we are going to plot. We shall do this on this axis we shall have what cumulative frequency then on this other axis because our values start with a 20.5 you can you can you can break your scale like that then start at 10.5 then 
draw like that then you'll have 10.5 like that like that on a graph paper you know it has a it has a scale then you choose an, an appropriate scale like looking at the cf it is zero up to 60 so you are supposed to choose wisely depending on the on the space you have like you can say if this is zero the next one is five the next one is 10 like that like that up to 60 or you can say 10 20 depending on the availability of space you are given you must use at least three quarters of that space so that for you to get a scale mark s1 scale your scale should be at least three quarters and should be linear linear means you cannot put here 10.5 then you put here 20.5 20.5 then you decide to put 30 this is not linear so if it's 10.5 and you are adding 10 you should be consistent 20.5 30.5 40.5 like that like that so if you if you can quickly copy this then i know you can access a graph paper from from the nearest canteen or shop you can plot this or using even a squared book you can plot on the y-axis cumulative frequency and on the x-axis what upper class limit so your graph should look not very different from this one it should look like that so one you must label your graph so this side you write there cumulative frequency so you write here cf cumulative frequency then here we write max we don't write upper limit what whatever we are talking about if it is mass you write mass so here we are talking about max then you can plot so we remember our 10.5 value the frequency was zero so that's why this starts at zero the other one was 20.52 you can see here we can see the next one here you can follow through here then this one then there is this then there is uh, that one then there is this and lastly that now this one in an exam situation that should be about five marks or four how will we mark we shall we shall check if you plotted all the values in the table you get p1 plotting we shall check the scale if if you have used three quarters of the space given then we shall also we shall also check the axis are they labeled have you labeled this cf then have you labeled max and is the scale linear like from zero you have gone to 10 20 not 10 20 50 like that is this scale linear then you if the axis axis labeled and the scale linear yes so you get another mark then we have the curve which should be a smooth curve you get two marks that will give you a total of what a total of five marks therefore your graph should look like this now our interest is to use this graph to calculate quartiles and to get the interquartile range so remember we said the first quartile which is q1 q1 we already agreed that q1 is a quarter n or n over four so what is our n our n is this value here how many students 60 so you take 60 over 4 that should give us 15 so you check for 15 on this cf side 15 so you can see 15 is between 10 and 20 so this is our 15 somewhere here then using a ruler and a pencil you move like this like that like that to the graph then move down move down like this and read this value here that will be our q1 so remember the value we calculate n over 415 we look for it on the y-axis then move with a ruler and a pencil to look for the corresponding value on the x-axis because this is the side where we have max remember on the on the y-axis this side we have what we have cumulative frequency or number of pupils but the marks they scored they are shown on this other side therefore we check 15 move to the curve then move down right there q1 when they say quartiles you have to calculate even q2 q2 which is called median that will be now 60 over 2 that should give us 30 so check for 30 where is 30 30 is here so move move like that move like this move like this move like that then move down give us this value here give us the value then like using my scale <coughs> you can see from 10.5 to 20.5 those are 10 small squares or two centimeters so each represents each represents one so you'll be reading like like this value if you want to read which value is this you go to 50.5 then as you move one square you say 
51.5, till you get here. Then you write your answer. Then lastly, Q3, that will be 3 quarters. So that will be 3 over 4 times 60, which you get as what? 45. So look for, look for 45. Look for 45 on the y-axis, on the y-axis, on the cumulative frequency axis. So look for 45. So you have, my 45 is somewhere here between 40 and 50. You can see 45 is here. Then move like this, move like that to the curve, then move down, move down. So this is my Q3. This was my median, this was my Q1. Then you write down those values and get all the marks like that. Do you think that's so hard? Not really. Co compare this with the other one. So that's how we can calculate that. Then there is the last question there. Uh, about uh, your talk uh, estimate the interquartile range of the performance. So interquartile range, interquartile range. This should be Q3 minus Q1. So you take the value of your Q3 minus your Q1. So this one you have an advantage. Uh, in an exam situation, we shall look at uh, why you able to use the graph. Yes, can we see evidence? Can we see some lines showing that you use the graph? And then lastly. The values you read from your graph, do, have you used them? Yes. If yes, then the interquartile range mark, you must get it as a free mark because we are using your, your value. So you must be very careful and be as accurate as possible. So that's how we can. Now the last one, they're asking for what? In order to pass, a student had to score for uh, more than 48 marks. So what we do, we go to the graph and locate 48. So if we go to this graph and then... Uh, locate 48. Where is 48 on this graph? Where is 48? Can you see 48? From your graph, you can look for 48. So if you check for 48, for my 48 is here close to, my 48 is here close to 50.5. So this is my 48 mark here. 48 marks is here. So I move to the curve, then now backwards and see how many students scored 48. 20. 20 students scored 48. Then we are saying the pass mark was more than 48. So how many students scored more than 48? Everyone from 20 upwards, this side, they scored more than 48 marks. So to get their number, how many students passed? You take the total, 60 minus 20. That will give you 40. Then the percentage of students who passed, that will be 40 over 60 times 100. So that should give you about 66.7%, like that. So easy. So remember, here, we are looking for the number of students. So we reverse. We start with 48, move, then check 20. We were asked how many, what percentage of students pass. Therefore, you check how many are above 20. So that should be 60, the total, minus 20, 40, over 60 times 100. Very easy. Now, lastly, uh, I want to look at, uh, so you have that to practice. You can take a photo on your screen. You can take a photo of this, then practice later on. You can calculate that. The mean score, draw cumulative frequency graph, and use it to estimate median score quickly, like that. So I, I want to move to, to the last bit, which is variance. That's another question. You can just take a photo. Take a photo of this. You only need the question. You need from the table to that question. Then you can uh, you can look at them later. So as I move towards winding up, I want to quickly look at uh, something called variance and standard deviation. Variance and standard deviation. So I'll just introduce this and then later on someone else will look at it or we, we shall look at it later. So what we call variance and standard deviation, these are called measures of spread. Spread. So they are talking about how data is spread. So we are looking at, uh, for example, if I still use the COVID cases, you've heard about the distribution per county. There's a county with two cases, there's a county with 400 cases, there's a county with 180. So we want to see variance will help us to measure how the data is spread. So the bigger the value of variance, that means that's how varied the values are. But if the value is small, it means the data we have collected, all, almost all of them are very close. 
then the square root of variance is what we are calling the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation tells you how far each data value is from each other. Like, we are measuring the deviations within, the deviations within. Therefore, variance is the square of the deviations, the mean of the squares of the deviations. So that tells you how spread the values are in a given data. Therefore, uh, how do we calculate variance? So we want just quickly look at uh, two cases. We have ungrouped data and we have uh, grouped data. So like here, we when you want to calculate the variance of ungrouped data, you take you take uh, the sum of d squared over n. There's there's something there uh, that should be sum of d squared over n minus sum of d over n then all this squared that should give us variance and it's given by s squared because it's the the mean squares of the deviation so we write it as s squared so in our case here example one so this is the formula for for variance when the data is ungrouped now for for example one you can see here quickly if we look at example one find the variance of the following scores find the variance of the following scores so you can see we have a 9 12 like that up to 23 so you rearrange your scores in a table like this and then look for d that's what is important look for d what is our d in this case we have defined d as d equals to x x minus x bar what does this x bar mean that will be mean so in this case because we are not told assumed mean we have to calculate the mean first so how do you get mean the sum of all these values add all these values divided by their number so they are seven and their sum is 112 that's how we get what 16. so to get our d we shall be taking 9 minus 16 12 minus 16 so this is minus 16 minus 16 minus 16 minus 16 like that so you'll get negative 7 negative 4 like that like that then we need the total here and the total here therefore then we have d squared d squared means square this be careful you don't do this on your calculator like that that will be wrong so you do this negative 7 then squared so you'll get what 49 16 4 like that like that so you get the sum so the sum for d all this will give you zero then d squared will give you 138. Therefore, using our formula above, you realize the variance will be 138 over 7. Why, why are we saying this? Because it's supposed to be minus 0 over 7, then squared. But anything, divided, 0 divided by any number is 0, so this part will be 0. That's why we just take this only. And if you want to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of that value of that variance. Then what about if uh, if it is grouped and there is an assumed mean? So look at those two formula there. If if when we're not given assumed mean, you only need this. You only need this. I guess this this formula here is in your mathematical uh, table. You can check. Then if we are given an assumed mean, where it means uh, you are making your values. To, to be smaller or that is called coding in math where you reduce your values then you have to use this formula so your work is to know this formula or this one then apply it appropriately i have i've tried to see an, an example the table below gives the points scored by a team in various events so quickly look at that table quickly look at that table here find the mean and the standard deviation you've been told use a working mean of a is equals to 4. This is assumed mean A equals to 4. So you, we have the points 0 to 7, then the number of events 1, 2. So this number of events, that is our frequency. Then these points, that is our X. So we look for T or D, whatever you want. So T is X minus A. So we shall be saying 0. Okay, 0 minus 1, you get that. 1 minus D, you get that. All those, you get your T. Then you, you need fx because of the mean so you take 0 times 1 you get 0 like that then you take ft ft means frequency which is 1 times t which is negative 4 you get negative 4 
Then there is ft squared. ft squared, remember, it is only the t that is squared. So you square t first of all, negative 4 squared. Then the answer you get, you multiply by f times 1. So you get, you get your, uh, this should be, this should be, that should be 16, like that. So you can, you can continue working and get the rest. So I want to really appreciate uh, everyone for watching from wherever you are. So if you look at uh, KCSE from 20, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, no question has missed. Look at paper two. Just look at using uh, KCSE made familiar. Then you can look at the questions in paper two and do practice. Then you can also refer to KLB form four. Otherwise, stay safe wherever you are and keep watching KU TV Elim Live Monday to Friday. Thank you. I'm Teacher Donald. See you again. Bye for now.